Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for another story here at Johnny Tales. The tell for this one goes like this. My bridesmaid skipped my wedding to get engaged. Should I be her bridesmaid? Plus, I need help. Hi, I, F, 25, just got married six months ago, and this is still bothering me. So here I am. I have been friends with this girl, we'll name her OF26, since I was 10 years old with a break from ages 15 to 21, I moved. We reconnected just before my 22nd birthday, which is around the time I met my husband. She had also just started dating her now fiancé. We are two of five in a group of girls all from the same middle school and reconnected at the same time our partners into the mix. Honestly, before I got engaged, there's not much of a story. I found it odd that she got a very similar dog to mine and named it something similar almost a year to the day that I got mine, but that's like, whatever. She did a couple other little copycat things, but imitation is a form of flattery, right? Anyway, my man and I get engaged and essentially, same day, choose our wedding date, which was nine weeks later. It was a significant date. Moments after getting engaged, I call the group and share the news, telling them we will most likely be getting married X day. Now, I understand it's short notice, but they're my lifelong friends, and I knew they knew they'd be bridesmaids. O tells me she will not be able to make the wedding because she has a trip planned. Is this wrong of her? Because I totally understood. I make it official at my engagement party four weeks later and ask them to be bridesmaids, knowing O won't be present. I ask them for nothing. Note, they did not throw me a brunch or lunch or help with anything, nor did I expect it because it was all so quick. I told them they could wear what they want, no gifts, just be present X day, place, and time. Shortly after my engagement party, wedding 4.5 weeks away, that O tells us her boyfriend has gone ring shopping. I am happy for her thinking she'll be engaged soon, or soonest the end of her trip. My wedding morning arrives. She sends me a congratulatory text from the airport departure lounge. My wedding day goes by, the day after my wedding goes by. I've been married now 48 hours and, oh, drops, we're engaged in the group chat. So what do I do? I call, of course, because that's the least you can do when one of your closest five friends has a big life event. The FaceTime call was awkward at best. She never acknowledged my wedding, even though I was still in my all-white sweatsuit. She didn't seem to care that I called and her fiancé couldn't be bothered, but I could have been interrupting, I guess. Note. She had the ability to call me and join the girls from wherever she was, but chose not to. They returned for their trip, and I begin planning to host one of the other five girls' birthday party. She, of course, comes to my house for the party. This is the first time we see each other since I'm a wife and she a fiancé. At the time, I lived in a high-rise building, so I had to go down to get her. First words to her, congratulations. It was not returned. Not to me or my husband all night. She talked about her wedding ideas and plans with my husband for no less than 30 minutes while the rest of the girls got ready. The other ladies noticed, but she just didn't seem to read the room at all. I even tried by giving her a white scrunchie I got during wedding planning as a little pass-along bridal thing in an effort to initiate some kind of conversation. After that night, I really realized that this may have been intentional. I mean, of course I thought it, but now I was really skeptical. I asked another girl in the group, and according to O, her fiancé only purchased the ring three weeks before their trip, which means he knew he was going to do it. That's fine, but it would have been so much nicer to have felt included and not like it was done to overshadow me. He could have called and said, Hey, I'm going to do this. I know she's your lifelong bestie, and she won't be in your wedding photos. But it's for good reason. I would have been so down and happy. This leads me to believe that she doesn't really speak highly of me to her man or make our friendship seem as important as I considered it to be. She was a bridesmaid at my mini wedding, 25 guests at the ceremony. We live about 45 minutes apart and have very busy lifestyles, so I haven't seen her much since. I've been distant, I. The group chat, but I'm not sure she's even aware there's an issue. Dispute me not being able to give her a definitive answer on whether or not I want to be a bridesmaid in her wedding. It's been six months since my wedding, and her engagement and her engagement party is coming up. My cousin asked me to plan her birthday party, which falls on the same day as her engagement party, so honestly, I'm not pressed about going at all. I still feel icky about everything, and honestly, I'm not sure if I care to work it out. 
On the most important day of my life, IMO, she showed how much she cared to make me feel loved. I haven't done anything bridal for her beyond the scrunchie. Amita and or am I overreacting? Should I be her bridesmaid? Plez, I need help. Notes. Her wedding is in 2025. Her and her man have been together as long as me and my husband, me, F25. My husband, M26. Her, F26. Her man, MM29. Next story. Aida for refusing to lend my friend my house for her wedding. After she asked me for a paternity test, resulting in her having to cancel the wedding. My friend Sandra and I have known each other for over 20 years. We are 30, 32. Sandra is getting married to Andres, and I am married to Ian. Some relevant information. Andres and I originally come from the same country and even the same region. We share many characteristics. We both have very round faces, deep brown eyes, long straight black hair, etc. If you didn't know better, you might assume we are siblings. I met Andres six years ago and introduced him to Sandra. He proposed two years ago. I own a beautiful property in my home country that I was ready to lend to Sandra and Andres for their wedding. My property is like a finca and has 10 rooms. Usually I would rent it out for weddings at a somewhat high price, but I was happy to give it to them at no cost with the condition that they hire their own catering and have their guests strip their beds when they leave. The issue, three months ago, Sandra became more reclusive. She wouldn't answer my texts and we didn't meet up. Two weeks ago, she appeared at my door with Andres. They sat us down, my husband included, and said she suspected that my daughter is actually Andres's biological daughter and requested a paternity test for peace of mind. I was so shocked that I couldn't say anything. My husband lost his temper and raised his voice, telling Sandra that she was being absolutely stupid. Sandra pointed out that my daughter looks like Andres. I explained that Andres and I look alike. She kept shaking her head, saying my daughter would look more like my husband and not like my exact copy. The evening ended poorly. I agreed to the test if they paid for it. The results came back last Friday, showing that Andres was not the father. We also did a test confirming that my husband is the father. Sandra cried and tried to hug me. I told her I didn't want to and that I didn't want to be friends with her for the time being. She kept saying her worries were justified and made a comment about women from your country being more likely to do that. In that moment, I was filled with anger. I told her she could forget about using the venue and that I didn't want her in my life anymore. She started crying, but I made her leave. Her mom and she have been texting me saying they can't find a new venue. I still said no. 20 minutes ago, Sandra called me sobbing, saying that the wedding is off because of me. Am I the asshole? Should I have let her use the venue at the usual price? Or was what I did okay? Edit. Andres was not chill about this. He seemed exasperated. He was quite upset and basically just agreed to this, so she would drop it. I didn't include it because I did not see the relevance for the conflict between me and her update. They are no longer together. Sandra just wrote me an email apologizing and for some reason PayPal'd me 2567 euro. Anyway, thank you for weighing in. AITA for telling my husband's kids how broke he was when we met after they insinuated I was a gold digger. I've 38F been married to my husband Rob, 52M, for four years now. My husband's late wife died one year before we met and we dated for two years before marriage. He has two kids, 28 Madison and 26 Brett. Note, I am not calling them my stepkids because they explicitly told me I am not their stepmom, just their dad's wife. I didn't play a part in raising them, so I'm okay with that. It's always been a tense between us. I've tried my best to be kind to them and have been generous when I can be, but they are very cold with me. Being a child of divorce, I can partially relate to a parent moving on, so I try not to force anything. Madison recently got engaged, and we are excited about it. Everyone was over recently, and she asked about a wedding budget from us, and Rob told her he was able to contribute 10K. She has bigger hopes for her wedding than this, so she was upset and kept asking for more. Rob, however, is still working hard on building his savings back up. Before his late wife died, he basically wiped out his cash savings, had to cash out his 401k, and even took a small mortgage on his house to cover medical costs as well as life expenses since he had to cut back on working. 
Eventually, he had to drop that job for a more flexible but lower paying one. So this 10K is actually really generous from him. Rob went to run an errand and it was just me and his kids. Madison then asked me if I'm going to give any in addition to what her dad is giving. I told her we're a marital unit and that's what we discussed together as a reasonable amount to contribute. She then said, I should have known. Obviously, you married an older man for what he had, not for what you could give. I knew she didn't like me, but this is the most flat-out rude thing she ever said. I kind of lost it and said, Excuse me, who do you think has been paying the second mortgage your dad took out to pay his debts? Truth of the matter is, I make more than her father by a large margin. I have no debt and have been paying 70% of the household bills the whole time we've been married. The 10 k we're giving her is available because I've been able to subsidize her father's living expenses the last few years. I made it clear that not only am I not a gold digger, I'm literally wealthier than my older husband. She called me stuck up after this and stormed out. Then she called her dad later and said that I told her that I blamed her mother for being sick for her not having a better wedding budget. I told him what happened and he was mad at her, but also said I shouldn't have shared his financial details with his kids. Shocked after my wife's trip to a friend's, I don't really know where to put all this down. This seems like a good place. My wife and I have been married for 13 years. We've been through a lot together, most good. I thought we were in a pretty good place. I got sick recently and couldn't continue working for several months. That's when I started to notice slight change in her behavior. She'd spend hours every day submerged on her computer, playing games with her online friends. I don't have any problem with her hanging out with her friends, as it always seemed to make her happy. It was just the fact that from the moment she woke up around 2 p.m., all day, all night, and then all morning until about 7 a.m., just constant chatting and giggling and playing her games. The computer was in the living room of our house, so I'd usually be watching TV when she woke up. We'd have some pleasantries before she dove right in. Headphones on and locked in. It was like that for over two months, and I just had to accept it, because any time I brought it up, it'd just be brushed aside. Now I need to mention there was one guy that she played with that she told me she had an innocent little crush on and wanted to be able to flirt with him a little. It was just harmless fun, she said. I told her I was uncomfortable with it, and she gaslit me saying I was blowing it out of proportions, and it wasn't serious like that or anything. Just harmless flirting. I could always tell when she was talking to him because her voice would change. Become more, I don't know, sultry. Well, a couple months ago, she decided to take a trip across the country to go visit her friend, who she hasn't seen in a few years. I had no problem with it, obviously. I thought getting out of the house would do her good. She didn't work for the last several years, and even after I had to step down from my job. I've known her friend for years. She's a great person and married with a brand new baby. Nothing to worry about. So the day after she arrives, we're texting like normal. Maybe less than normal since she was with a friend. Come that night, I was on Amazon looking for something and noticed in the recently purchased was a new vibrator that could be controlled via an app. My heart kind of sunk. She didn't mention it to me and I've never seen it. Maybe she just got it for herself? Well, later on that night, I was looking at photos on my phone and I guess my phone is linked to her cloud. And the pictures she was currently in the process of taking just killed me. She doesn't send pictures like that to me, has always refused. I called her and she didn't answer called again, and nothing. I left a voicemail telling her to call me back. After a couple hours, she finally did. I told her what I had seen, and her response was just as bad as the photos. She didn't care. Not one bit. It seemed like she almost found it funny. That she's been thinking lately, she wants to open the marriage. That she likes being with me. But she will continue doing whatever she wants, regardless if we stay together or not. That a part of her is glad she hurt me. I was just in shock. I didn't know what to do or say. Thirteen years. I told her I don't want to split, that we can find a way to make it work. She, of course, said she's still going to talk to this guy. In my shock, I said that I hate it. But if that means staying together, then fine. Stupid, I know. It didn't last more than a few weeks. We're in the process of a divorce now. I just wanted to vent, I suppose. Sixty percent declined RSVP. I regret not putting the wedding in my hometown. I'm from the West Coast. My bride is from the Midwest. We both live four hours from her hometown. 
We've been here for nine and seven years respectively now. We got engaged in December and targeted a July wedding as we'd be moving to the East Coast in August and wanted to move in together only after being married. We're Christian. I was extremely maxed out with work and dealing with several family issues this winter, including the death of my brother. I wasn't excited about the city of choice, but her mom's friend is a planner and agreed to do a lot for us for basically nothing. I knew I didn't have the capacity or wherewithal to push to my hometown, nor the bandwidth to offer much in the way of planning before summer hit. So I agreed last asterisk to getting a planner to help us and having the wedding in Detroit, slash, we were shooting for less than 200 people, 250 max, but now of the slash approximately 110 of my invites, I've had only slash approximately 38 RSVP yes. Of those not yet replied, I don't expect more than slash approximately 10 more. Aunts, uncles, cousins, close friends from several chapters of life where I was born and raised, sash, lived until I was 27 years old, 2015, cannot make it. Some extenuating reasons, but many because they simply cannot drop tilde $1K for RT flights plus hotel, etc. I am sad and severely disappointed that I did not push to have the wedding in my hometown. I'm 35 years old, extremely extroverted. I've looked forward to this day for a long time, and a huge part of this anticipation was having all of my favorite people in the same place at once. I don't want to take away from her excitement. We have approximately 200 guests. But I had to be honest, let her know that I sincerely regret the location choice and that my excitement for wedding day is pretty deflated. Edit, I love my fiancé and am thrilled to marry her. My disappointment is not in the low number of RSVPs, but the fact that my close family, nobody on mom's side, and close friends are amount those. Two things to clarify one. Some have assumed that I've done nothing for our wedding and put all the burden on her. That is not the case. I merely said we got a planner to help us. I've been active every step of the way, and we have each devoted time weekly to tasks related to our wedding. I created our whole guest spreadsheet, designed our invitations. I made our website and registry and all the other details we've collaborated on. What I said was I didn't have capacity to push for my hometown even though the current reality was a concern for me. I am leaving my job by June 1st and will be taking the lion's share of wedding tasks from here. Two, a few have mentioned this, so I will say we had already planned to do a smaller second reception in our current city, of which I would be championing most the planning as I will leave my job by June. We are going to make that more low-key and have decided we will do some kind of second reception in my hometown in December or on our one year. I've talked on the phone with my fiancé. She is not hurt by me expressing my feelings and shares in the disappointment about how lopsided the guest list turned out, especially given 50 people, slash, she reminded me, of those invited are her mom's guests. Thank you truly to those who have shared their own stories given sympathetic, empathetic, and or helpful comments.